Okay, so I'm going to attempt to make a mask. Never done this before. And what we're looking at the moment is um, just some cheapest chips. Um, Eva sheets, cost me a dollar or two dollars or something. And I have a little bit of trouble uh, not making things even and uh, the same. So I got a little bit of assistance from my young son and just asked him to just cut up one of the Eva sheets so that I've got some all different shapes and, and, and that's me. That's him. So the first thing that I'm aiming to do is just sort of create a little bit that um, uh, maybe sits over the nose and gives a bit of a nose shape. So I've just sort of cut these pieces and this is just really guessing. Um, and I'm going to sort of glue them in a little bit of a 3D shape um, and see if we can just start making a bit of a face nose shape for the mask. Okay, so I've got my trusty glue gun again and I'm just going to try and glue some of these bits together so I'm thinking then to sort of glue some bridge sort of bits that come across the nose onto the cheek So I'm hoping that um, it's now going to allow us to sort of keep some shape as we sort of load stuff up onto it. And I plan to cut the eyes out after everything's done, um, just to make sure that they're in the right place, the right location. Managing okay. It messes with my head just a little bit when things aren't even and don't go side by side. But we're doing all right. And I'm quite happy with the coverage that I've got with that now. So I'm going to leave it at that shape. And you can see we've got a bit of patching and stuff. A little bit of a hole, but I'm not going to stress about that because we'll wait till the eyes are cut out. Yeah. I've held the mask to my face and I had my husband just sort of use a texture to kind of poke in some eye spots. Um, and I've cut out the first one and now... I left the more difficult one with the multiple layers to last because it's great to show you how you struggle on camera. It's not even going to get into that, is it? There we go, just get a hole happening. And again, a bit, bit thick. I don't know what I'm going to use if I can't use scissors. Don't currently have a standing knife. Okay, when in doubt, find a really sharp kitchen knife. And let's see if this can do any damage. Oh yes, I can feel that cutting through. Can hear the rain coming now that I've just hung out my washing. I can't get quite so circular shape in the knife in the with the knife, but um I might have different eye set. There we go, coming through. Nothing like a sharp kitchen knife for crafting. There we go, bit of an odd eye shape. Um, I've got a bit of uh, fly wire that I'm planning to, to maybe put underneath the eyes or something like that, but that will be after it's all painted. So there we go, done. So here's the mask, and I'm just going to use some um, plastic primer. Um, I'm assuming that will work. I haven't really done any research, but you know, trial and error is so much more fun. So I'm just going to spray that with some plastic primer and just flip it around the other angle, make sure I get into all the gaps and then just let that dry for a bit. My um, neighbour offered me a mass lot of excess paint from um, boat, boat building, boat painting and I simply couldn't say no so it means that um, I now have a bunch of colours and a bunch of different paints um, that are all really 
you know, generally external and house paints and stuff like that. But um, generally, if I want a colour to do something, I can find something in here. So from my paint stash, I've found a gold. Um, doesn't look too gold on camera. Um, but it was in a really, really old tin, about, I don't know, 40 years old or so. Um, and rusted, so um, I've put it into a new paint tin. Um, checked to make sure it wasn't a lot of paint before using it, but um, nothing like that, so no issues there. And um, this I'm hoping to use as my base to give this mask a bit of a metallic look. Okay, so I've waited about 10 15 minutes, I meant to wait 20, but the foam really sucks it up the coat, and I'm not wanting to wait because I like to get in and do things. I've learnt two things with paint. Um, one is that you either have to wait the proper time for it to dry, or the other one is that you can actually come, you know, pretty much straight on top after it's wet and just tidy it up a little bit. Um, so I've done a first coat, and I'm just going to go over a second time in the opposite direction, um, just to cover a bit of this green. Okay, so I've been really really patient and let it dry overnight and I'm pretty confident it's dry because um, even the sort of bits like that when I touch them there's no sticky there's no wetness inside um, so now I'm going to get a pot of brown paint uh, mission brown fantastic color so again this comes from my paint haul and I'm just going to um, use a little bit of that. So I've seen this technique but I've never actually done it before. Um, so plastic bag and like that. Pull it off more and let's see how this goes. So I didn't end up taking, putting any extra paint on this side. Um, I've just sort of used the, the wetness and brought it over and I kind of like how this side's looking better so I'm going to try and remove some of this paint and just sort of maybe I don't know I work well with even let's see how it goes the mask is almost dry just a very very little bit tacky but I'm impatient <laughs> um, so I'm going to try and add a little bit of copper now um, so uh, I'm again just using things that I've got so this is a little bit of copper ink um, and I'm just going to dab it on. So I've got a dry, clean paintbrush. And just going like that. So it's hardly coming up at all, but that's kind of what I want. Because I want it just to look like it's um, part of the metal. And you can only just, just barely see, I don't know if it's even coming up on camera. That's how I'm going to go with it. I was thinking to spray it with some rust guard because um, I've had previous experiences where uh, paint has got wet and dripped everywhere. But um, And most of this is house paint, so generally I wouldn't have to worry for that. Um, but the, the bronzy sort of ink that I added to it um, is just standard ink, so I am going to give it a spray um, just to make sure that it's okay. So, just the coat's dry and we've got lots of shine on it now. Um, and now I sort of, you know, need some embellishments, some things added. So I've got this bit of fly wire that I'm going to put over that eye, like that. And I've got this watch that I've um, picked up in an op shop and just taken the, the back and the mechanism and stuff out. And I'm thinking maybe to sort of have that going across like that or something. Um, I've also got these uh, brads or, or paper studs um, that are little hearts. Um, just using the resources that I have on hand so I don't have to go out and buy more stuff.
So I want to add a couple of the, the studs along here as well. Um, the top one was easy because there was already a hole, but the um, studs aren't strong enough to actually go through the, the band of the watch, so I just have to pierce that a little bit to make a hole. There we go. And I need to press against it just to foam is pretty thick behind it so I need to um, push it to get a bit and the last step that I'm going to do is I've just got some black ribbon that's going to be used to tie the mask on and so I'm just going to glue that and there we go finished and ready to wear.